Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Evershade Gaming and I have the pleasure of welcoming and announcing and sharing about the Magna Soria from the Saurian Ancients Alpha Lab. I'm going to be reviewing that section of the book and the monsters and also taking a peek at the jungle gorillas as well which are two really interesting sections of the book full of a lot of units I think a lot of people are going to want to take. Let's get into it. In the army organization of the Saurian Ancients they have two special categories that cover a wide range of units and monsters. They have the Gorilla Warriors which is maxed at 30% and they have the Magna Soria, which is maxed at 35%. So what does that mean? So for our Jungle Gorillas, which comes past our special section, we start off with Skink Gorillas. For 135 points, 10 points per model, you get 5 models, and you can get up to 15. And they are standard infantry, 20 by 20. You can have 0 to 4 units per army. So for five dudes, uh, you get uh, advanced six dudes with March 12, Discipline 6. They have Communal Bond, they have Light Troops, they have Skirmisher, they have Vanguard. And they have one HP, they have two defense, RF2, zero armor. They have 40 dudes, six up in hard target, which is nice. And then they're not built for offense. They have one attack, offense two, strength three, uh, AP zero, agility three. What you're really getting these guys for are their shooting weapons. So you can either take a blowpipe, which is free, which is two shots at strength two, poison attacks. Or you can get a magnetic shortbow, which is a new uh, armor uh, thing in the armory, new weapon in the armory, which is range 18, strength three, AP 1, and it has the Lodestone Special Rule, which if you haven't heard about that yet, the Lodestone Special Rule is against any target with armor 3 or higher. The person shooting the Magnetic Shortbow gets plus 1 to hit, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and then you can take Marking Lures, which is up to 2 per army, and then you can take Chameleons up to 2 per army, which we can actually go all the way to the top of the book. You might have already seen this in different videos or stuff. Chameleon is when you gain ambush, hard target, and scout. So you can choose to ambush or scout, get even more hard target. Or you can get marking lures, which is units hit by one or more uh, attacks with marking lure gain scent marker until the end of the game, which is scent marker is what allows you to uh, get uh, these predator sensibilities where you can... Uh, get uh, the ability to get better hits and stuff when you're charging and stuff. It's it's a neat ability. Let's go back down to our gorillas. So five guys, 135 points. Uh, you can't take a champion. No other upgrades. Uh, and you get, you get zero to four units of these gorillas. And then you have weapon beasts, which are pretty similar to how they were beforehand. They're large beasts. 40 by 40, 130 points for one model. Uh, you can have 0 to 3 units, 1 to 2 models in a unit. 110 points for an extra model. They're 612 as well with Discipline 6, Communal Bond, Light Troops. They lost hard target, if I'm correct. Uh, HP 3, Defense 3, R4, Armor 3. That's all the same. 3 attacks, Offense 3, Strength 4, AP 1, 3 Agility. They must choose a choice. They can either be a Spearback for free, or they can be a Salamander for 5 points. You can have 2 Spearbacks, uh, or two unit, you can have 0 to 4 Spearbacks in your army. Or you can have uh, 0 to 3 Salamanders. And these weapon beasts have a new rule called combined strength, which means they can join in to units of skink warriors or skink hunters for free, which is uh, could be very useful, actually. So the Salamander uh, does a breath attack at strength 3 AP 0 flame attacks. And this breath web attack is not being limited to being used once per game, but it can be used once per player turn. So you can use this as a shooting attack, you can use this then in your opponent's combat phase, you can, every other phase, every phase you could do a breath attack, which is pretty cool. Um, 
it's only strength three, but I mean, two of those doing 46 strength three hits is, you know, auto auto hits uh, can really add up. It's it's pretty interesting. And 240 points for two, uh, or, or 250 because they're five points per model. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's interesting. Definitely something that needs to be tested. And then spearbacks are pretty much how they were beforehand. Uh, range 18, shots 2d6, strength 4, AP2, quick to fire. Uh, this weapon you know, may not be used if you march. Uh, you must declare a stand and shoot as a charge reaction if possible, and you don't suffer the minus one hit for it. That's pretty much how it was. And the last thing in our jungle gorillas are our pterodon riders, which for 185 points, you get three models. It's 30 points for an additional model. They, you can have only zero to two units of these. They're large cavalry on 40 by 40s. Their ground move is very slow, 2-4, discipline 6. Uh, fly is much faster, 8-16. They also have communal bond. They have feigned flight. They have fly, 8-16. They have light troops, skirmisher, and vanguard. They have 2 HP apiece at defense 2, R2, armor 2, hard target shield, so they have 4 of armor save altogether. The Skink Rider has a single attack, an offensive 2, strength 3, AP0, with a light lance, agility 3. And then the Pterodon has two attacks at offensive 2, strength 4, AP1, agility 4, aerial assault harness. So definitely not a super uh, potent combat unit, but that's not necessarily the reason why most people are taking these. So their new rule is called aerial assault, and units consisting entirely of models with aerial assault may perform a sweeping attack. The enemy suffers one hit at strength 4, AP1 for each model in the unit. So that's pretty cool. You can do sweeping attacks to these guys now. And you must choose one choice, a poison javelin, which hits on a 4-up, range 12, strength of the user, um, poison, uh, you know, and then or magnetic short bow uh, for two points per model, which is the strength three, AP1, range 18 inches. Or you can take Marking Bolas, which is range 12, shots 1, strength 4, AP1, quick to fire, Marking Lure, which is pretty cool. So that, again, is a way to get that prey sent around to increase the ability of your combat units um, against uh, other, other enemy units. And the crazy thing that I think now is you can take a champion who's a wizard enclave. And the champion wizard enclave has two spells like it's left from. Chilling Howl, Enlightenment, Master of Earth, and Spirit of the Woods, which are pretty good spells uh, all around. So very, very interesting way uh, they change these guys. Just slight tweaks uh, to make them really nice, really cool. So that's our Jungle Gorillas. You can only have 30% of these, and some of the core units do add into the Jungle Gorillas, like if you take... Uh, skin hunters. Um, I say skin hunters don't add into jungle gorillas. Wow, that's nice. Oh, that's incredible. Wow, but uh, I I think some of the mounts do. Right, right. Uh, some of the skink mounts. Uh, yes, jungle gorillas. So if you take like a a pterodon on a skink guy or a, a pulley sky titan yeah then you okay so a couple of the mounts in the character section do but uh that's not that crazy that's pretty cool so 30 percent isn't huge but these uh, units are all fairly cheap uh so you could probably actually almost seems like you almost could max out on the number of units <laughs> and still be within that 30 percent of your army list and then the magnasoria this is a very interesting, exciting section of the book. So you're capped at 35%, which is not is normal, I think you could say. But it's pretty good. And they have, what, one, two, three, four, four entries. So, uh, yeah. Yes, because one of the dinosaurs is actually not in the Magnosauria. One of the dinosaurs is the Thyroscutus herd, which is just in special, which is also really awesome. So, yeah, Soren Agent is going to really run a dinosaur heavy list uh, with lots of big models, big, uh, um, not only big models, but just like big units of uh, packs of Stygisaurs and Carnosaurs and Taurosaurs all running around. So, that is very cool. Um, how many different models? Like, if you can fill up your core with scoring. 
you could have a lot of different dinosaurs running around in your in your army. So first thing first is a Stygiosaur pack, which at 325 points gives you two Stygiosaurs, and you can have zero to three units. You can have two to four models in a unit, and they're 110 points for the next one. So four models is going to run you uh, 545 points. And that's without taking a champion or a standard. And these guys can take a banner enchantment, which is pretty crazy. So these guys uh, are Fan 7, March 14, Discipline 6. They have Communal Bond. They cause Fear. They have Pack Hunter. And they have Scoring. Uh, I just noticed that these guys are scoring. And that is insane. Oh my god. You have scoring dinosaurs in this army. That is nuts. Which, uh, the scoring is huge because, again, if you're just watching this for the first time, you know, there's, you know, there's been a lot of different reviews about the different parts of the book. But Communal Bond is the universal rule that all Sorry Ancient units have, which gives them Swift Reform, gives them the minus, minimized discipline when they're within range of commanding presence, and then it gives them the commanding presence rule that is generated from scoring units. So that is really awesome that they're scoring. I did not even notice that when I was putting a list together to play a battle report. I kind of wish I ran these guys now because that sounds so freaking awesome. Okay, wow. So yeah, Stygium sword packs are scoring. That's incredible. I, I can't get over that. That's really cool. So Stygium sword packs that are scoring. They have 4 HP, Defense 5, uh, 4, R5, Armor 2, Light Armor Shield. So they have a 3-up armor save, which is very, very uh, solid. The Skink Rider has a attack, an offensive 2, strength 3, 0, agility 3, light lance. That's very typical for a Skink. And then a Stygius Sword itself has 4 attacks, offensive 4, strength 5, AB2, 3 attacks. They have harnessed, poison attacks, predator senses, and stomp attacks. And the predator senses are what allows them to use the scent markers. Um, so them and like the Carnosaur have that same ability, I believe, that helps them uh, like when they it helps them hit better when they get into combat against certain things. The thing is that they mark at the beginning of the game. Um, so yeah, I think they lowered the HP by one, but just the fact that Stygiosaurs are scoring is incredible. And then obviously the ability to put them in a big pack is pretty cool. Um, they lost their Wizard Conclave. But there's so many other wizard conclaves in this book. It's not a big loss. It was pretty good on the, the Sigisaur because it you could do shamanism and get the shamanism buff on it. Um, but you could also do that in other places, essentially. But very cool. So yeah, they can take a champion, a standard, and a banner enchantment. I'm curious if there's any banners in the the book that are particularly good. So the Koru Stone could be around these guys, which gives them a rally around the flag set to eight inches. That's pretty good. Uh, the uh, Skeptic uh, Steel is, they get MR1 and then one use only when the Bears unit and all units in base contact with the Bears unit. Oh, one use unit, the Bears unit, all units in base contact with the Bears unit automatically fail all Aegis saves. This effect lasts to the end of when the bears unit is no longer engaged in combat, that's pretty good. I'm not sure if they're the one that needs that. And then they can also gain Pack Hunter, uh, which Pack Hunter is. Is that the ability to reroll charges? Yeah, that's pretty. That would be really good on these guys. In, a, in the charge phase units with more than half their models, the Pack Hunter may reroll failed charges. That's pretty good. I know that's on the uh, Raptor Riders. So that would be very good to add that to your Stygia sort of pack. So that's pretty cool. 25 points for real charges. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty powerful. Uh, so yeah, Stygia sword is very nice. So there's a Carnosaur now. No, there's two char There's only one character mount that's a Carnosaur. It's just the Alpha Carno. He's your big gribbly in your character section that you can put a Tegu veteran on. Uh, now you have a just a normal... Uh, with what's called once the baby carnosaur is just its own monster now in the magnosauria which i think is great uh, i think they should do this with more things um that are like were previously character mounts that were like in that weird area of 
kind of being good, kind of being useful, kind of like you always had to be careful about how you balance it with magic enchantments. Now this is just like a good monster um, that is like fun to play with. So it's Advanced 7, March 14, 375 points. You can have two of these in your army. That's pretty cool. It's a gigantic beast. It has communal bond, like everything else. Fearless Frenzy, 5 HP, Defense 3, R5, Armor 4. Very, very solid. Two attacks from the Tegu Rider, Strength 4, AP 1, Offensive 3. Uh, Lodestone, that's the ability where he gets to hit better against Armor 3 or higher. Uh, Carnosaur with five attacks, Offensive 3, Strength 6, AP 3, Agility 3. One of the biggest weaknesses you're going to see across the Sword Ancients book is low offensive skill. Um, and that's even present on a decent amount of the monsters where they're, they don't particularly hit anything very well. Um... But the Carnosaur does make up for the fact that it has Battle Focus, Multi Wounds 2 against Standard and Large, and Predator Senses. Um, so that's pretty cool. And the Predator Senses is, again, it's the, the marking thing. So if something's marked, it gets a reroll to hit against it, which is, is very helpful for something that doesn't hit all that particularly well. So, uh, and then the cool thing is this Carnosaur can join in with Raptor Riders and Raptor Packs. Uh, for 10 points if you, if you buy the hunt leader upgrade and all the models in the unit also get frenzy and fearless and then all the models in, and then all the beasts in the unit get battle focus which is pretty cool um, so the fearless and frenzy is a little tough um, but they do have a decent charge range so I think you're more often than not going to be able to kind of charge it where you want to get into there uh, you can choose a Light Lance for free, or you can get a Halberd for 20 points on the Carnosaur. I don't know if you necessarily need that. The Strength 5 is nice, but 20 points, uh, you, you know, might be something you add and then cut it when you need to do. So the Taurosaur. All right, so the Taurosaur is, I would say, nearly unchanged, it seems like. Taurosaur 425, single model, 0-3 to three per unit, a gigantic beast, 50 by 100, it has Advanced 6, March 10, Discipline 6, Pino Bond. It is HP 6, Defense 3, R6, Armor 4. It has 5 Skink Riders, which are normal Skinks. And then the Taurosaur itself has 4 attacks, Offensive 3, Strength 3, 6, AP 3, to 2. This is the big change, is it has its Harness, and then it has Impact Hits 3d3, which is crazy awesome 33 impacts really change how many impacts you do not only does it make like your average impact hits so much more reliable it uh i mean it raises the ceiling from just a normal d6 so that's very cool uh the torosaur can take a howder device which i know some other people have reviewed the howder devices uh, suffice to say the how devices are either uh like an excellent shooting profile or something that's going to augment your magic phase. Or you can turn the Taurosaur into the battle standard bear for the entire army, which is pretty cool. So, uh, Taurosaurs are great. You can have 0 to 3 per army. They don't run in herds, but um, you have a, a Sigisaur pack slash herd, and then you have a, a Thyroscutus herd. And the Thyroscutuses can also take Howder devices. So, three things in the army can take Howder devices. The uh, Thyroscutuses, the Taurosaur, and then the newest monster is the Titanopod, which is a gigantic beast on a 100 by 200 millimeter base. That is huge. Oh my god. You can only have one unit per army. It's 510 points, which is pricey. It's definitely getting up, especially if you add a Howder device on there. All of a sudden, you're going to be looking at a pretty expensive model. Uh, but So what do you get for all this? It's Advance 4, March 14, Discipline 6. It has Communal Bond like everything else. It has Strider. It's just a great rule to have for anything. It has the Very Earth Trembles Walking Mountain. It's HP 10, Defense 3, Strength, uh, or Resilience 6, Armor 4, which is pretty typical for most of the monsters. The HP 10 is pretty nuts. It has six rock releasers in its howda, which have a single attack at offensive 3, strength 4, AP 0, a bunch of lizards throwing rocks down at people below. Uh, and then it's uh, a, they do that at agility 3. 
And then the Titanopod itself doesn't have a whole lot of offensive ability. It's off. Uh, it's a it has two attacks: so offensive three, strength six, AP two, agility zero. It's harnessed as well, and then it has a special rule for uh, combat or offensive called Path of Destruction. So Path of Destruction. The number of hits from the model stomp attacks is set to 4d3. For the purpose of stomp attacks, the model ignores cannot be stomped and considers all enemy models without towering presence to be of standard height. If the model's stomp attacks are distributed onto a large unit, the number of hits is halved, rounding factions up, which is nuts. So you can stomp anything but gigantic in the game, essentially. Uh, you can stomp cavalry, you can stomp chariots, you can stomp, you know, specialized things that are normally cannot be stomped. Like, you can stomp the Dreadnought Beastmaster, this guy can't stop, you know, this guy's weapon isn't going to stop the, the Path of Destruction. I'm not entirely sold that 43 at Strength 6 AP 2 is enough. I, I kind of like felt like I kept looking at the math for this, and it seems like since this is a like single monster with just a single rank, it's got a low discipline. It, uh, my fear is that this thing seems like it might break from combat a lot against anything that's even like a medium ish combat threat. Um, like not a single large model, like you know, like a single chariot might might take it to the face. Um, you know, I don't. So I, I, I really think it's interesting. I just I'm concerned, especially against anything large. You half it, so you know you're really looking at only four stomps on a large unit um, on average, right? Um, with like two other attacks. You know, I don't know. I just, I could see, like, I just feel like I could see this thing breaking from combat too much. So part of me wonders if we, if you could bump the discipline up or, like, if it's stubborn. Like, stubborn seems applicable here for something like this gigantic. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's interesting. I just, uh, yeah, because even it has a rule to kind of help against with combat bonus, but I don't know. I'm... I don't know. I think it's really cool, and I like that you can take a Howder device too. It's got a weird movement mechanic, Advance 4, March 14. Um, but yeah, I'm, that's my biggest concern is that it just doesn't seem like a combat output against like things that really matter. Then again, this is like the. I, I think a big thing in this book is trying to get things to work together. So, like, clipping this on the corner of a big combat, that's very nice bunch of strength you know on anything you know you can stomp just about anything but another monster um so that's very nice um so yeah but i just think for such an expensive uh you know piece on your board i think you might want to i don't know a little bit more i don't know i i think i'd be curious to see how this might get tweaked because to me it just seems like a little on the weak side um, I think it's in the right direction. I think it's a cool idea and a cool concept. I love the idea of having such a ginormous base to do like a really incredible miniature on it. Since I'm sure there's so many like big things out there that'd be really fun to do, but they're too big to get on 100 by 50. So I really like all those different things. I just am concerned that this guy uh, is just not going to be able to hold himself in combat. So the variant trembles. The model is a musician, and the range of the models march to the beat, uh, and to enemy units that are required to take march by six and eighteen inches. Got the kind of slave giant mechanic from uh, ogre cons, and then a walking mountain is it's one of its other universal rules. Enemy units do not gain flank or rear bonuses for being engaged in the model's flank or rear. The model never benefits from cover, which makes sense. It's so big. In addition, the model always passes restraint pursuit tests, and the pursuit distance is always zero. Which again, that's just like that itself is kind of rough. Um, they like you can never pursue with it. Uh, so even if it is winning combat, it's not pursuing. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I think there's definitely seems like there might be some space to 
to tweak it or to make it a little bit more powerful but it's interesting as it is so yep that's our gorilla warriors and our magnasoria for the saurian ancients book everybody thanks for watching and i hope you look forward to the book's release which should be uh, tomorrow this video should be coming out on august uh, 31st so look forward to getting to dive into the Sword Ancients uh, Alpha Lab for all for yourself, make an army list, uh, getting to play some games on September 1st of 2022. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. See you guys.